It's another beautiful day on this weekend that we have gathered, and we hope to God that our the Zoom gods treat us favorably this morning. Um, we had quite a quite a week with um, somebody from the inner circle of Zoom going away for the weekend and forgetting to tend to his or her business, and so. Uh, we all had a weird, weird worship. I think the whole East Coast had a, quite a strange Zoom worship service. Um, and we plowed through, but it sounds like we're in a better place today. I want to welcome everybody to Christ Church United, the church that knows how to do church and be church and uh, forgive church and grow up church. And uh, it's Zoom Sunday number nine, I think, something like that, that we have been uh, asked to um, close down and flatten the curve and join in defeating this pandemic. Um, you might hear the quote I'm about to share tomorrow, uh, next Sunday as well, but I, it's such a great quote. It, it relates very much to where my thoughts and heart are these days with regard to the pandemic and also with regard to climate change. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King shared these words, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. And so we come to this oasis, this spiritual oasis this morning to worship and to praise God and to seek strength for vigorous and positive action in our lives. And I welcome everybody who's joining us from Florida to Alaska to Moscow to Addis Ababa and uh, Togo, West Africa, maybe. Uh, we will be unmuted for a couple of times during the service when we pass the peace and for coffee hour. It's great to have Felicia ready to sing for our offering. We've got Valerie Manning Jones ready to share her own reflections, whether it be in poem or spoken word on what climate change and what the church can be doing to combat climate change after my service. Second of three weeks titled Every Day is Earth Day and we're going to get into it as soon as we uh, hear God's word in scripture. So let's get into it now and Janet will lead us in a gathering song. Yeah, so this song is called Oh We Give Thanks for This Precious Day. And it can be a call and response song. So if you want to sing it along there at home, uh, just sing what I sing. Like if I sing Oh We Give Thanks, you sing Oh We Give Thanks. Here we go, giving thanks. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day.
friends, this is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O come, let us worship and bow down to God, our Creator. Let us kneel before God, our Maker. Let us be in a big and full-throated, full-bodied spirit of worship as we gather as Christ Church United. Welcome, welcome to the welcoming church. Let us hear from Miles and Janet as we call ourselves to worship. Good morning, church. Please join me looking along on your bulletin for the call to worship. Janet will be replying. Uh, the earth is beautiful and bright and kindly, but that is not all, says Ursula K. Le Guin. God's presence and power are in every corner of the universe. Creation is God's presence in creatures, says Wendell Berry. Praise God, all creatures of the earth. All the stones that are around here, each one has a language of its own. Even the earth has a song, says Wallace Black Elk. Let the stones sing their songs to God. It is only the infinite mercy and love of God that has presented us, prevented us from tearing ourselves to pieces and destroying God's entire creation long ago, says Thomas Merton. God's mercy and love are unending. Those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts, says Rachel Carson. Let us see and proclaim the beauty of the living God. God, give us strength to see, judge, and act and write a new story. As followers of Jesus, we are a new creation. Another great awakening begins. Amen. Amen. And we have a song this morning that some of you know. Sing praise to the Lord. Pal Senor. And I asked the keyboard to do some percussion first. Here we go.
Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is full of your glory, and some of us need to stand and stretch and dance on this beautiful day as we worship you. Our hearts are on fire with the awareness that Christ is risen and that Jesus is among us. And so we thank you. We thank you for calming our fears, for reminding us in the beauty of this day of our own beauty. And we praise you. Never leave us good and loving God. Never leave us. Let us abide forever in the assurance of your love through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Friends, I've put the same call to worship and prayer in our bulletin as last week. Sometimes they're just too good and they need to be repeated. This prayer for the earth was written by our brother, Pope Francis. Let us pray. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon each one of us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may show beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Amen. And for a moment of silence, let us lift up our prayers for the earth, our prayers that summons from our hearts, lift up our prayers to God. And we will sing hallelujah to the Lord.
Thank you, Janet. And friends, listen to these assurances of God's pardon. Take heart. God's spirit empowers us to move from the ways of death to the ways of new life. Thank you, God. Our sins are forgiven. They are erased, whatever has weighed us down this past week in our minds, in our hearts, in our thinking that has been negative is gone. The light of Christ permeates our bodies and our world so we can forgive ourselves and we forgive others. And we give ourselves another chance to be fully involved in the joyful community of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who Lord, art in heaven, Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Amen. Glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are members of this new created order. profound and made real in Jesus rising in the tomb at Easter. Let us take the assurance of pardon that we have been given on the strength. The peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you. Peace, everyone. Deep peace of the rolling waves to you. Thank you, Janet. I'm going to play now the video that we were unable to play last week uh, at Peter's request. It is from uh, Bread and Puppet. It is a book called St. Francis Preaches to the Birds. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Um, and let me just uh, bear with me a second while I share my screen real quick so we can watch this video. St. Francis Preaches to the Birds, a bread and puppet publication. Special anniversary and edition for St. Francis's 800th birthday. This is St. Francis. It's 5 a.m. Wake up, St. Francis. He opens the window and sings tra-la-la. He brushes his teeth and says, thank you, teeth. He washes his toes and says, thank you, toes. 
he gets milk, drinks his coffee and says, thank you, coffee. He goes through the town, through the apple orchard, over the pasture, and up the hill. And the birds come flying, 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 flying. Then, then St. Francis preaches to the birds. until the sun sets. Yes, until the sun sets. The end. The scripture reading this morning. The scripture reading this morning again. <laughs> the mother of Zebedee's children, James and John, came to Jesus with her sons. She got down on her knees before Jesus to ask something of him. He said to her, what do you want? She said, say that my two sons may sit one at your right side and one at your left side when you are king. Jesus said to her, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to take the suffering that I'm about to take? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said, yes, we are able. He said to them, you will suffer as I will suffer. But the places at my right side and at my left side are not mine to give. Whoever my father says will have those places. The other 10 followers heard this. They were angry with the two brothers. Jesus called them to him and said, you know how the kings of the nations show their power to the people. Important leaders use their power over the people. It must not be that way with you. But whoever wants to be great among you, let him care for you. Whoever wants to be first among you, let him be your servant. For the Son of Man came not to be cared for. He came to care for others. He came to give his life so that many could be bought by his blood and made free of the punishment of sin. Amen. Thank you, Will. And let us pray. Friends, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, wherever we are, be acceptable in God's sight, for God is our strength, and God is our Redeemer. Amen. A friend up here in New Hampshire had a guy lined up to come and cut down some trees. This guy showed up, he made a bid, and then, without really being asked, he shared with my friend how the entire coronavirus was a hoax, brought about by the deep state to screw the common man and woman. He wouldn't wear a mask, no, no he wouldn't. And why? Oh, the same reason he wouldn't vaccinate his children. My friend was left undone by this encounter. So worried at this righteous indignation of this tree cutter. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus did not say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul when you feel like it. 
as God has given us all. God wants all of us, all that we've got. One of the Easter messages I've been grabbed by and which I've repeated for several weeks now, I share again. St. Paul, so deeply touched by his encounter with Christ, became the ambassador for Jesus. And that one sentence from his letter to the church in Corinth sums up the spirit of what it means to be alive in Christ in Easter tide. That one verse, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old passes away. Everything becomes new. We are a new creation, friends, and we have new creation energy to take care of what needs to be taken care of with heart, mind, and soul, all that we've got to give. These are very perilous times for those who refuse to use all of their minds and give some real thought to how we're going to overcome this pandemic. Today is about loving others as we love ourselves. There are a lot of people who are no longer living. There are 100,000, there are a lot of elders, immune deficient loved ones, people with chronic health issues who are at great risk of catching COVID-19. There are many frontline workers and first responders and humanitarians who are helping us out. There are 34 million, at least 34 million unemployed. Yes, this pandemic spell spanned 300,000 beyond these shores. Today is not the time to complain about rights being taken away. Today isn't the time for I'm more of a patriot than you. Today is not the time for people to shout, we want normal. Because for many, sadly, getting back to normal isn't desirable. This pandemic has exposed some real inequalities. Homelessness in Lowell. Millions are without health care. Thousands putting their lives at risk with little protective gear. When schools are shut down and children from urban or rural areas don't have the internet for their new Chromebooks, it's not fair. Last Sunday, CBS's 60 Minutes aired a good segment which helped viewers understand how this virus fits into the larger picture. Frank Snowden, the author of a book titled Epidemics and Society, From the Black Death to the Present, was interviewed. He wrote about the bubonic plague in the 1300s. He wrote about the cholera pandemic in the 1800s. He said, history teaches us about ourselves. Humankind has learned much from these pandemics. He said, the science is different. However, the plot is similar. It's from major health catastrophes that we as a people have learned about the importance of lockdowns and social distancing, quarantines, and that they work. Order comes from plagues. It's not all doom and gloom. For example, sanitary measures, toilets, sewer systems, paved streets grew out of plagues of history. Housing regulations developed. Today, we are forced to reckon with the fact that there's an abundance of signs that our earth is in danger. The 60 Minutes host went on to say, Mother Earth was forewarning us of the signs that things were unhealthy. And you remember these signs as well, my friends. Last year was the hottest year on record. The melting snow, the bushfires in Australia, locusts on the African continent. You remember this. Humankind and nature are living in much closer proximity. The recipe for what we're experiencing today has been in the making for many, many decades. 
He then interviewed Bill McKibben, a name familiar to some of us. Bill McKibben, who lives in Vermont, has been issuing warnings of the dangers of ignoring science. He said, we're being reminded that physical reality is real. We tend to forget that the physical world still is in charge. McKibben said, I've spent 30 years trying to get people to understand that physics and chemistry matter, that you can't spin them. They're not going to negotiate. They're not going to compromise. You have to do what they say. In these corona times, biology just doesn't care. It doesn't care if it's causing a recession. It's not going to back off because it's an election year. It doesn't give a fig about any of that. You have to respect that. It's hard for us because, as McKibben reminds us, we're used to a world that runs the way we want it to run. Today, Memorial Day, we honor those who sacrificed their lives for our nation and the freedoms foundational to our United States of America. We remember the hundreds of thousands from the greatest generation that stood up to a crazy lunatic in Germany. We honor the 70,000 who died in Vietnam and the thousands who died in North Korea. Today, we are mindful of the more recent conflicts and the fact that many are sacrificing their lives to uphold the collective values so many of us Americans cherish. If we truly want to honor those who've served and those who are serving, we must ask ourselves, just as it is being asked in the Pentagon right now, what is it that we're willing to sacrifice our lives for, dedicate our lives to, and trust our energies to. Last week, I touched upon the need to bring deeper spiritual appreciation to the sacred stories in the book of Genesis. That is, if we intend to truly respect our Mother Earth to make every day Earth Day, we have to find new meaning in the old myths, the stories of creation. We must search for and pray for and learn about the new stories which help us appreciate that we're together part of the whole fabric of life. Having respect for creation, it's not a sign of weakness. And rather than dominating creation, caring, living in harmony, is now the only choice we have. I've said this before and we all ought to take heart the fact that we're doing the kinds of renovations that we're doing now in our church is extraordinary. When I think just about how much oil we've consumed heating the two zones of our church for the last 100 years, I want to cry. There are so many improvements that we have been making that we look forward to celebrating and seeing and participating in when we return to church. This is one significant way we as the body of Christ seek to live in harmony with creation. And also last week, we touched upon the third industrial revolution introduced by Jeremy Rifkin. As with the first and second industrial revolutions, which are to be credited for human progress in the past, the third industrial revolution is now needed today. Jeremy Rifkin speaks of the third industrial revolution and the sharing economy. You ought to take a look at this again and again and again on YouTube. It's chock full of facts and stories and arguments about this need for us to change. Rifkin's advice is being sought all over the world. His plan is a big, big shift. It recognizes economic warning signs. The plan harnesses all the technological know-how we have. The big sectors, communication, transportation, and energy are all due for a radical change. Rifkin's plan keeps fossil fuels in the ground. His plan promotes massive investments in alternative energy jobs as well. Rifkin's plan speaks of the dreams of the younger generations and how they want 
to structure their lives. And how we must wake up and understand that they don't want to structure their lives the way we are structuring our lives. They are much more into sharing with their global friends, much more into accepting those who are different, much more willing to consume less. Today, I want us to appreciate the relative of the third industrial revolution, and it's called the Green New Deal. It fits with Jeremy Rifkin's third industrial revolution hand in glove. It acknowledges that the fossil fuel civilization will collapse in less than 10 years and introduces a bold economic plan to save our planet. The perils and costs of rising sea levels, warmer oceans, superstorms, it's a plan that acknowledges that mass migration, civil wars, global conflicts will all rise if we don't address the impacts of climate change today. We've seen nothing that we will see in the future in our southern border if we don't address these plans, this reality, this reality of climate change. The fact that Americans consume a disproportionate amount 20% of the world's natural resources must be addressed. It's a plan that considers wage stagnation that has been in effect for the last couple of generations anyway, and the greatest income inequality since the 1920s. It's a plan that places greater value on clean water and air. Yes, the Green New Deal is a blueprint for shalom. We use the word shalom as a greeting, and it's a lovely greeting. It's a Hebrew word meaning peace and harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. Shalom is what heaven on earth looks like. We might speak of returning to normal, but life has changed, and we are going to have to make our best efforts to recover. Yes, that's the American way. We will celebrate the power of having the strongest economy, a time-tested democracy, though not perfect, given the anemic numbers of people who vote. But the real reckoning of our age, maybe our lifetimes, is not only whether we will prevail over the virus, it's whether our respect for science and our collective will, so muscular during the crisis, will prevail and reboot and rebuild. Will we see increasing signs of shalom? McKibben says there is a real way out of this, there, there is a real way to use this crisis as an opportunity. The dumbest thing to do would be to set up the pins in the bowling alley the same way. I love that quote. The dumbest thing to do would be to set up the pins in the bowling alley the same way. No, the new, more, the new normal isn't returning. And that's something that we should get used to and begin to celebrate and put our shoulders into. It's a good thing. We are to be the harbingers of the new creation so desperately needed. And we have God as our witness and our strength. We see the normal, that is the old way, in the way the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons. That helicopter parent asks Jesus for a special favor. Please, Jesus, give to my sons, James and John, a position of authority, privileged seating, special status, Super Bowl tickets, and the highest place of honor, one at your right hand and one at your left. And Jesus responds, you have no idea what you are asking. And he says to James and John, are you capable of drinking the cup that I am about to drink? You might think so, but you are not. You know that the other 10 disciples overhear this and they lose their tempers. And so aware of the disharmony, once again, Jesus calls those 12 close to him and says, you've noticed how good rulers through their weight, you've noticed how good rulers throw their weight around. 
how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. This is what the Son of Man has done. He came not to serve, but to, he came to serve, not be served. And then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. We are those to whom our Lord, our Savior, our friend, our teacher, the risen one, Jesus, is speaking. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. I am called, you are called, we are called, and we are given super spiritual strength from God to live with integrity and model a way of love and kindness and equality. As Jesus lived, taught, and died, so we must also live and teach and die. Let us keep on with the task of building the kingdom of God, the spirit of shalom. Hold fast to the vision of heaven and earth embracing, kissing, a new world where the level playing field is the norm. The homeless are housed, the sick are healed, the hungry are fed, the peacemakers are universally honored, where guns and nuclear arms are no longer used to resolve conflicts, and where each person, regardless of their immigration status, their sexual orientation, their age, their race, their class, is given a fair shake, an opportunity to live a long and meaningful life. Amen. And now let's hear from our sister Valerie Jones, our former moderator, our poet in residence, the one who always is listening on a deeper plane for how the spirit is moving, moving us. Hi, good morning, can you hear me? Yes. I was asked today to talk about climate justice and why is that something that I am passionate about. So for 25 years or more, I've been working with people with substance use disorders, mental health issues, who are a group of people who have been silenced, have no voice, and you work towards justice for them. And then climate change comes into the equation and it dawns on me that climate change encompasses everything and everybody. The earth, creation, it impacts our social, physical, economic, mental health. And this is something we really have to take serious because the reason that they have no voice is because we have decided that with this industrial revolution, we became way too greedy and we devoured and destroyed the earth. And now comes a time when we have to sit back and say, what do we need to do to repair? Repair the earth, repair ourselves. So it's a lot to do. It sounds scary. Change is always difficult. When we talk about, we got to compost, we got to recycle, and it becomes confusing. And what you really have to start with is praying and be convicted of spirit and being spirit led. So when you, and you have to educate yourself. So we took a step back and we looked at Jeremy Rifkin and we looked at the Green New Deal and we had to look inside. And so if we wanna make this change, it's, it's slow, it feels like it's slow and we are told we gotta speed up. So now we gotta say, how do we get there? If we truly wanna be great again, if we wanna make America great again, we start with putting others before ourselves. Every choice you make, think about how that impacts everybody else. The systemic poor, systemic racism, when we choose, to continue to eat meat 
And we've been told that raising of cows, if they just was printed yesterday, if cows were their own country, they would be the third highest um, impact on the climate change. Animal agriculture is the highest one for global warming. So we know all this, but we continue to keep doing what we're doing. So change is not easy. And I'm not saying I've made all the changes I need to make. What does it look like at the end? It looks like we convert power to wind and solar, clean energy. It looks like we've made changes in our transportation system. Uh, and it looks like we redo buildings so that they can be formatted for solar power and that we are not impacting and destroying the earth anymore. We're working in unison. In Genesis, it tells us, God tells us, I give you all the plants in the field, the trees with fruit with the seeds inside them and they will grow and grow and grow and this is what you will eat. And so we have to think about how do we make that shift? In the end, it looks like so that it doesn't look like vegan and vegetarian is a fad diet, but the norm. And when that happens, it'll be more economic. You'll be able to do this without uh, paying extra for it. When everybody moves towards a healthier way and it, it improves our own health, everything we've done, now we've had the industrial revolution, we're gonna move towards this, the third revolution, and it's going to look different. Yeah, we're not going back. Those jobs are not coming back. They're going to be more poor and we're going to need to help them. If we truly want to be great, we need to think about every choice we make and how that impacts somebody else. It's slow. It's got to be done spirit led. You've got to pray and you've got to move forward. And all of us together, we're doing the church is doing it. What can we do individually, collectively for the nation and for the earth? And so that is why I am passionate about climate change. And, and I know it's not always easy and it's confusing, but this is something we have to do. So I would encourage you to review Jeremy Rifkin's YouTube video, The Green New Deal, and just start making small changes. And, and as we move forward, every small change leads you further down. And as you're led to move into a healthier, more economic life, you'll be there. And hopefully all of us will move towards that in the end. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much, Valerie. Friends, Valerie said it, and we're gonna practice it right now. The need for prayer the need for the Holy Spirit. As we share our prayers of the community, we will unmute the mic, share your prayer and say, this is my prayer. And we will respond in that wonderful cacophony of voices near and far, this is our prayer. Let us pray. Yeah. Oh, great love, we thank you for living and loving us and living in us and loving through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us to become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen to us now as we share our heart's longings one with another. Oh God, I pray for the healing of our world. This is my prayer. This is our 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 prayer. I pray for those who may especially be feeling alone, struggling with depression and anxiety during this time. This is my prayer. This is our this prayer. Is our prayer. This is our prayer. I pray for increased caring and awareness for the whole human family. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. We're getting married today. 
This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Pray for the new norm. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. <laughs> I, I pray for every member and affiliate of CCU, those we've lost touch with, those we haven't heard from, those we love, and those we're in touch with. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Pray for those who are suffering and grieving um, and uh, feeling disconnected. May we be safe. May we be peaceful. May we be at ease. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. I'd like to pray for all of the frontline everywhere, those in our community, and those who are working hard to help others heal. This is my prayer. This, this is my prayer. prayer. I want to pray for all the doctors, all the nurses. <laughs> this is my prayer. This is our prayer. I want to pray for all the, the our children. Um, this is hard enough going through this as an adult. And um, yeah, they're going to come through more resilient um, is part of my prayer. But um, it, it's very difficult, I think, for all of our children and, um, you know, to understand what's going on. As, as I said, it's difficult for us as adults. So I pray for our children. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. I pray for patience and strength and clarity about our situation so that we don't give in to the impulses of our uh, lesser natures and stay the course and do what we need to do. That's my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. God, I thank you for the of this day, for the wonders of this hour, for the incredible blessings of life in this nation. I pray that you will watch over all our leaders. I pray that you will watch over all our children. Help us to continue on our journey of faith that it might have an impact, that we might better reflect your love for all that lives. And as Gary says, in Jesus' holy, wonderful name, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, church, I wanted to share a story as we move into our offering this morning about a miracle of generosity. So I'm going to go ahead and play this very short video. And uh, right after this, what we'll do is uh, go ahead and listen to Felicia bring us a time to love a musical offering this morning. Thank you, Felicia. <coughs> Today, I want to tell the story of a money miracle. Do you remember? Remember Pine Ridge? Reverend Ruth Richards recently gave $1,000 and asked our church if we want to participate because the youth had had such a great time there. Christ Church United showed up, adding $1,000 to make Ruth's two. And when the Sunbeams began studying the first fruits lesson in Leviticus and 1 Corinthians, they too were moved to be generous tithing 10% of our Sunday school budget. 
And then somebody else, upon hearing about the Sunbeam's generosity, made an anonymous gift themselves of $200. Praise God for helping us be generous. Amen. Amen. Stevie Wonder's A Time to Love. We have time for racism. We have time for criticism. Held bondage by our isms. When will there be a time to love? We make time to debate religion, passing bills and building prisons for building fortunes and passing judgments. When will there be a time to love? At this point in history, we have a choice to make, to either walk the path of love or be crippled by our hate. We have time to cause pollution. We have time to cause confusion. All wrapped up in our own illusions. When will there be a time to love? We make time to conquer nations, time for oil excavation, hatred, violence, and terrorism. When will there be a time to love? At this moment in time, we have a choice to make. Father, God is watching while we cause Mother Earth so much pain. It's such a shame. Not enough money for the young, the old, and the poor. But for war, there's always more. When will there be a time to love? We make time for paying taxes or paying bills and buying status. But we will pay the consequences if we don't make the time to love. Now's the time to pay attention. Yes, now is the time to love. Love, the time to love. Now is the time, now is the time to love. Please won't you tell me when will be the time to love, love, a time to love, a time for truth, a time for prayer, a time for peace, a time to care, a time to love. Please won't you tell me when will there be a time to love? Please won't you tell me when will be the time to love? Mm. Amen. Thank you so very much. Felicia, now is the time to love. And God, we thank you for this opportunity to share an offering 
that is born of our desire to love you and love the world. We thank you for, for Felicia's gift of song. We thank you for the genius of Stevie Wonder. We thank you for all the inspirations this day. Bless that which we give, that it might be used to extend your reign of love. Amen. 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 And I'm going to thank you as well, Felicia, for that wonderful, wonderful song. And we are going into announcements now. Hey, Wally. There we are. Welcome to Christ Church United. Love one another. It is a time mm. of love. It definitely is. Um, here we go. So our announcements today are, are, you know, we used to in the bulletin call our announcements, um, the life and ministry of the church. And that's what it truly is, is this is the life of our church. And this is how we continue loving each other and loving our community, uh, even during these odd times. So um, be sure as always, you can go on our calendar of events on our website and find out ways to get into all of the great things that are happening. And also um, sign up for the newsletter if you don't already get it. It comes out once a week and it's great. Um, so you can text to sign up for the newsletter. Joy Minute is still happening every morning at 8 a.m. and it is truly joyful and we are privileged to hear each other's voices come on and to laugh together and pray together and hear quotes and poems and songs. And it feels more like a, 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 a joy, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more than a minute. It's a half an hour, but it feels like you've just been given a great big hug to get your morning started. I invite everybody to come and join us for Joy Minute. Thank God it's Sunday school. It's still happening, of course, but on Friday evenings. So I love that. Thank God it's Sunday school. is Friday evenings. And Miles is forever doing creative, great things with the kids. Um, and interrupt me anytime if somebody wants to speak to one of the screens I'm going through. Pasta and Praise, Wednesdays at 6.30. We have a dedicated group and such great conversation in this Pasta and Praise moment. We're talking about Earth Day. We're talking about so many of the things that Reverend Peter shared with us this morning in his sermon. Um, how, how we can envision the new creation that we know our world can become through God's love and that we know we need to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next Sunday, New Member Sunday. Miles, would you like to speak for a minute here about New Member Sunday? No, okay. Yeah, I'll just I, yeah, I'll just share that we're looking forward to to doing it. I don't know exactly logistically how it is going to work yet, uh, but we will uh, you know welcome new members into service um, using probably a variation of our our normal liturgy that we use for that Sunday to, to welcome members. So there will be some unmuted time uh, because as you know, joining the church isn't just about uh, you becoming a member of the church. It's the church body welcoming, welcoming you as a member as well and making the same commitments to you that you're making to the church uh, as far as that goes. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll know on Wednesday exactly what the liturgy will look like, but we have at least three people joining. So I'm very excited. Uh, if you have not talked about membership with me, but want to join, uh, do, do give me a call or send me an email ASAP so we can make sure to include you. Yep. Thank you, Miles. And yeah, and Janet, if it's okay, I'd love to just say a little bit about Pride Sunday, um, which I don't think we have a slide for, but um, Nancy Butcher and Carla and I um, have been doing a lot of planning uh, because Lowell Pride is canceled. Uh, on Saturday, uh, June 6th, we will be having a Pride worship on Sunday, June 7th. And uh, we have um, ordered a whole bunch of rainbow trout wind socks so that members of the congregation uh, can, can uh, hang, at, hang these rainbow trout uh, from outside your bedroom window or in front of your house. And uh, we will be one body, a body of fish together from afar, celebrating all of God's queer glory on Sunday, uh, June 7th. So we're looking forward to getting those out uh, to you. Members of the LGBTQ Bible study have already signed up and we'll be opening that up to everybody else and be sending you rainbow trout 
uh, wind socks. So we're looking forward. It'll be a nice, good queer time. <laughs> Thank you, Miles. The time to love new members, welcoming new members, and, and welcoming Ed. rainbow trout. I want a rainbow trout. Uh, next week, also, we have coordinating council meeting will be at one o'clock. And this is an opportunity for all of us to sign in and a conference minister is going to be helping us figure out the, the steps to take um, as we lovingly send Peter off into a new direction and wait for God's uh, guidance into who will be the next person to come lead us. So this is a great opportunity for all of us to listen in and be present. Are there any more announcements? I'd like to say something. Um, actually, Jay, are you on? Are you, can you hear me, Jay? And can Jay be unmuted? The thing that I want to make sure that we share is that we have a Massachusetts state representative whose name is Representative Tom Golden, who is running unilaterally, making a decision within the next two weeks about whether to support a very important climate change piece of legislation in not just Massachusetts, but that will affect the region. And the governor has said he will sign it if it makes its way out of the state house. So I want to encourage everybody to forward the petition that I had forwarded to you earlier to go online and to write Representative Golden to tell them that you expect him to help us heal the planet and lead the Merrimack Valley in doing so. We've got two weeks to influence his decision. Talk to uh, me. Uh, Peter, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Jay. I, I can't see that I'm unmuted. It sounds like I am. So. Representative Golden is the chair of the Telecom Utility and Energy Committee. And you know, we were talking a little bit earlier today about how, um, you know, this is the, uh, this, this is the, the, the today that we thought we were uh, looking at as tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is today. There's no time for apathy, as Martin Luther King said. We've got to take action here in our backyards. I think that is the best way for us to uh, at least get started, certainly after prayer. Um, the prayer component gets us started and the real work happens uh, in the trenches and, and our trenches in our backyard here of Lowell happen at city council. And on Tuesday, there is a um, resolution being, um, being put forth. It's called, it's, it's regarding the state uh, uh, the state bill called the uh, Next Generation Climate Policy, and it's very exciting. It um, has uh, essentially, I'll, I'll just give you the top six points of this bill, and if we can get this bill passed, if we can get Representative Golden behind us on this, uh, we're going to take a giant leap forward uh, in climate policy. Uh, it has a greenhouse gas limit. It has a carbon price component. It has solar access for low income communities. It has uh, the ability for communities to call out their own stretch code, which improves and, and strengthens the, the, the degree of, of code compliance for energy, energy uh, systems. Uh, it has um, a thermal energy uh, testing component so that, uh, get, get this, this is really exciting, I think. It's a little further down the road, but gas pipes as they get repaired for leaks will be replaced with water pipes so that the earth will start to supply um, uh, geothermal energy instead of gas in the pipelines. I think how invigorating that concept must be to a community like Lawrence, uh, having uh, hot water in their pipes instead of gas. Um, there is also the uh, electrification of buses. There's a deadline of uh, 2030 to start getting elect electric buses at the LRTA and other organizations like that across the state. So there's just a, a huge array of things that can be done. And I'm very excited about pushing that forward. Tuesday night at city council, starting at 6.30, uh, anybody who wants to register to speak can call and do so. I urge people to call Senator, uh, excuse me, Representative Golden's office at 617-722-2263. 
I'll give you that number again in a minute. Uh, Representative Golden, as I say, is, is instrumental in setting forward uh, the policies and we can make change if we work hard and uh, make it clear to him that his constituents care about this. And so that would be my, that would be my secondary prayer for today is that people contact Representative Golden at 617-722-2263 and ask that his office support the Next Generation Climate um, Policy Act. I think that would be a, a really nice, uh, a really nice gift going forward. So sorry for talking so long. Thank you, Jay, very, very much. That is area code 617-722-2263. We can make a difference, right? Beneath our feet, friends. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for listening, friends. And here we're going to have Janet close our worship today. Take it away, Janet. Yeah, so if this, if this works, which it did when I tested it, um, then for our closing song, we're going to hear a song by the National Youth Event, the UCC National Youth Event, which of course has been impacted like all of us in terms of getting together, physically together this spring. But um, what this Together We're Strong video and song has been created. So if I push this button, yeah, we should be able to hear a piece of music by wonderful, inspired, empowered young people. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Yay. It'd be so easy just to turn away. Courage and love we find together we're strong we have wisdom purpose and you let the gospel Shows us how for here 
so much for that Janet I even saw Wally looking at that song that screen very carefully Wally with his, Wally with his lover and now may God bless you and keep you and the face of God shine upon you and be gracious unto you may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace now and always amen amen <laughs>